Welcome to episode 13 of Discovering Nagasaki from a Local. My name is Chad and this is where you can experience everyday life in this scenic and fascinating part of Japan. Thank you for tuning in to this week's vlog. So far more than three people were able to correctly answer last week's vlog questions. The first three were Denise Rollheiser, Daniel Hazen, and Kathy Garrett. The first question was, how many trays of bread were in the proofer before I put the pumpkin buns in the oven? There are actually two answers. Two trays when I first put the pumpkin buns in the proofer and six trays just before I put the pumpkin buns into the oven. The second question was, what antique artifact was between the speaker and the turntable in Sonogi's museum? The answer is an antique microphone. In today's 45 second kanji crash course, I want to introduce the last six peripheral kanji particles out of 62. In various positions with more complex kanji are much, have, foretell, cloth, earth, and big. <clears throat> Japanese peripheral kanji particles are similar to prefixes and suffixes in English. Prefixes and suffixes in English are used to supplement the meaning of English roots, like this example here. If you combine the prefix dis and the suffix eight with the root proportion, you create a word that combines the meaning of its three parts, disproportionate. In the same way, Japanese peripheral kanjis supplement root kanjis. In Japanese, there are 2,136 joyo kanji for everyday use, but all of these kanji can be constructed with about 400 root kanjis. Here's a one-page chart that I made up to myself to illustrate the peripheral kanjis and all the root kanjis in Japanese. It's based on a book entitled Kanji ABCs. I highly recommend this book, written by Andreas Forster and Naoko Tamura, for learning all of the joyo kanji in a systematic and effective way. From A to Z, each group of root kanjis have similar structures. For instance, group A kanjis 22 in number, all have horizontal, vertical, and or diagonal lines in their structures. Group B kanjis, 15 in number, all have mouth in their structures. Group C kanjis, 20 in number, all have sun in their structures. And group D kanjis, 14 in number, all have rice field in their structures. Students in Japan typically learn kanji in an order which is based on their frequency in everyday use and not on their structure. In today's vlog, I will show you rice harvesting on a nearby farm and jute harvesting on our farm. I will also show you a popular field of blooming cosmos at Shiraki Mine near Isahaya. Let's get started. In this direction, you can see the bullet train line under construction in the distance. Near our farm, there are many rice fields that are ready for harvest. Most of the farmers here planted their rice seedlings four months ago in June. This rice harvester has a grain transfer boom and it is sitting here idle awaiting some repairs. Typhoon 14 will strike Japan on October the 10th, three days from now, and most farmers are in a hurry to harvest their rice before it gets damaged. Hopefully this machine can be repaired quickly on site. You can see here that the rice in this field is mature and uh, ready to harvest. Although most rice farmers in Japan extract the rice with their harvesters in one pass, many farmers still cut their rice and hang it out to dry on bamboo poles like you see here. When the rice is ready, this farmer will likely thrash the rice with a machine in this field and then scatter the resulting rice hay. There are many coin-operated machines across the country where farmers can take their rice and get the rice husk and rice bran removed from their rice. Next I will show you a rice farmer harvesting his crop about 200 meters from here. This farmer has a functioning rice harvester and his family is helping him to harvest his rice crop. This machine doesn't have a transfer boom but it does separate the rice from the hay and then it ejects the rice into rice bags on its side as it moves along. You can see a JA, Japan Agriculture bag, just behind the driver on the right side of the machine. These machines are small and expensive but they make short work of a typical rice harvest like this one. 
The rice stalks are cut and drawn from the front of the harvester and moved toward the left side of the machine, where the rice is thrashed out. The rice hay is cut up and sprayed out from the rear of the machine, as you can see here. This farm in Suzuka Valley is about 500 meters from our farm in this direction. Here you can see some of the jute that I will harvest today. The jute leaves are green and their stalks are red in color. I will harvest this jute with a hand scythe and try to cut the stem just a few centimeters above the ground, just like this. This is what the harvested section looks like after I have moved the jute out of the garden. I will soon dig up these roots and deposit them at the back of the garden. In this direction, you can see where I have laid out the jute stalks on the ground. I have already started to bind these stalks with twine because the jute leaves need to be dried on a rack inside our house for more than a week. This is a photo of the jute drying inside our house. We need to dry the jute inside the house to prevent the leaves from turning brown. After a week or so, I cut the binding twine and laid out the jute stalks on the bed of my truck. Then I removed all of the dried jute leaves by hand and put them in this large green container. Using both hands, I thrashed these leaves in this container to break them up and yield a much smaller volume. Next, I used this small food press processor to break up the leaves further to yield the contents in this white bowl. Then I used this high-speed mill to break up the leaves into a very fine powder. In order to remove the unwanted twigs and vines, I filtered the whole batch of powder three times with this large sieve and then once more with this small tea sieve. This year's yield of jute powder is about 960 grams in weight, enough for a year's worth of bread. This is the entrance to Shirakimine Park. The first three kanji on this wooden sign read Shirakimine, which means White Tree Peak in English. There's a small log cabin near the entrance of this park and a site map here on the left. Below this cabin and down the forest bordered road behind me is Mizudori Ike, waterfowl pond in English. Up the hill and above the cabin is a large parking lot which, believe it or not, only has two cars parked in it right now. This is the path that you take from the parking lot to Shiraki Peak, which has a large metal statue on it. As I pan to the right, you can see some of the cosmos on the slope below and Areaki Bay in the distance. Across this bay is a controversial 253 billion yen seawall that was built 12 years ago. Here's a view from further down the hill. The cosmos viewing season has just begun here and in about a week's time this hill will be completely covered with cosmos flowers. My wife and I basically have the hill to ourselves today. There's a slight wind blowing over this field and the vivid and fluttering colors are so much better than a photo. Yasko is here today to paint these colorful dancing flowers on canvas. Here are some close-up video shots of the cosmos flowers on this hill. Each flower has eight petals and a unique and vibrant pattern of colors. Some of them have unique petals as well. Like these ones here. Every year in October you can view the large selection of cosmos flowers on this hill. 
There's no entrance fee for this park, but many people make donations. These flowers bloom when farmers are harvesting their rice crops in Japan. Even though there are some bare spots on this hill, there is no shortage of interesting flowers to look at. Typhoon 14 is now moving in a northeasterly direction towards central Honshu. It is no longer a threat to people here in Kyushu. I also took many photos today at Shiraki Mine, and these 15 are my favorite. If one catches your eye, let me know in the comment section below. And now for this week's challenging questions. First, what are the brand names of the two rice harvesters that I showed you today? Second, how many parking lots does Shiraki Mine Park have? Please continue to support my vlog channel by giving this vlog a thumbs up and by leaving a comment, a question, and or a suggestion below. See you next week.